seated in the presence of the Lord. Somebody scream with me. I am. I am. No, no, no. I said scream, y'all. Y'all know how I like. Someone say, I am. I am. Come on, put your best preacher voice on. Say, I am. I am. Don't say, I am. Put your hand on your ear. Say, I am. A legacy. A legacy. Carrier. Come on, put your hands together for the legacy that you are living in, that you are leading for generations to come. What an incredible opportunity that today we have every fourth Sunday of this year, every fourth Sunday of the year, uh, we are having some what we call Vision Sundays or Legacy Sundays. And we get an opportunity because legacy is, is about recognizing where we've come from, where we are right now, but to be able to stand in a place of faith and vision for where we are going. Uh, Bishop Garlington used to say, I can see you in your future and you look much better than you look right now. Is there anyone here that can say, Lord, I'm, I, my tomorrow is going to be better than my today. Come on, give God, give God some praise. And then there are some of you where you can say, Pastor, I don't look like what I went through. If you knew what I had gone through, if you just had a glimpse of what it took me to get to church today, the devil tried it. Try to keep me from coming into the house of God. But here I am, still standing, still praying, still believing, still with hope, still with a confidence that he who began a good work in you, in me, will carry it on to completion. Last Sunday, we, we talked about Moses and how we discovered that even as we've been reading Numbers chapter 13 that in Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse number 22 we discovered that Moses decided to hear the people and the people had an idea to send 12 spies over to spy out the land of Canaan even though we discovered by reading the text that in Exodus chapter 3, the Lord had said to Moses, I've heard the cries of your people, and I've decided to come down, and now I am sending you. And Moses said, here I am. Somebody say, here I am. And we discovered, obviously, that Moses had some challenges, and, and even though Moses uh, had a stuttering problem, even though he was a murderer, even though he had some insecurity issues, the Lord was still calling him. And in that same way, God is calling you. God wants to use you. Turn to your neighbor and say, he knows my name. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and say, you may not know my name, but he knows my name. And aren't you glad that he knows your name? And aren't you glad that God has called you and that he has something for you to do? And it's beyond just you. That actually the Lord needs you to fulfill something in the earth so that your children and your children's children can walk in the blessings and the blueprint and the legacy that has been marked for you even before you were born. Before I was in my mother's womb, in my father's loins, you knew me. You had a purpose and plan for my life. But we still have to deal with the fact that these 12 spies went to go check out Canaan. And so, turn with me in your Bibles to Numbers chapter number 13. We're going to start reading in verse number 26. If you have it, say amen. I'll give you some more time to find it. Hallelujah. While you are finding Numbers chapter 13, we're going to start reading in verse number 26. Pray this simple prayer with me. Say, Dear Lord. Come on, say, Dear Lord. Open my eyes. Unstop my ears. Prepare my heart to receive a word from you. I'll never be the same again because of your word. 
In Jesus' name, amen. They came back to Moses and Aaron, the 12, that Moses had sent to spy out the land of Canaan in verse number 26. They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. There they reported to them and the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. But the people who live there are powerful. Whenever you see that word, but, you should be thinking about what in the world. It's like, yeah, you sent me to go explore the land, and the land is good. The land is formed with milk and honey. But the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw the descendants of Anak there, giants, Goliaths, cousins. We even saw the defendants of the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites live in the Negev, and the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites, the, the Manapanites, the Canaanites, the Stoanites, the Brocktonites live near the sea along the Jordan. Then Caleb stood up and he said, Shut up. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, I'm sorry, I'm about to tell you to shut up. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm sorry. And, and just especially if you're sitting next to your wife or your husband and say, I know I'm not supposed to say this, but um, shut up. Turn to someone and say, shut up. Oh, y'all are too well behaved. Y'all can't, can't say shut up in church. But Caleb said, shut up silenced the people before Moses and said we should go up and take possession of that land for we can certainly do it somebody say with me we can certainly do it come on as a church I'm speaking to you that are that are watching online I'm speaking to you that are in this room I'm speaking to every person under the sound of my voice or that is watching this live stream we can someone say we can we can certainly do it but the man who had gone up with him said we can't attack those people they are stronger than we are and they spread amongst the Israelites a bad report now be careful of hanging around people that are always having a bad report those people that they're always given the bad news <laughs> anytime you see their phone number come up on the screen you're like oh Jesus I do not feel like all of the negativity will never make it this this virus will be with us forever and the world is going to end I don't know what's going on I don't my job is driving me crazy I'm not feeling well today shut up They spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land that they had explored. They said, the land we explored devours those living in it. And all the people we saw there are of great size. We saw the Nephilim, the descendants of Anak there, that we seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes. And we looked the same to them. In verse number, chapter number 14, it says, Then that night all the people of the community raised their voices and wept aloud. All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron, and the whole assembly said, If we had died, if we had only died in Egypt or in the desert, why is the Lord bringing us out to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and our children will be taken as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to each other, We should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. Then Moses fell face down in the front of the whole assembly that gathered there. And then Joshua stood up. Turn to your neighbor and say, one can chase a thousand, but two can put 10,000 to flight. 
<laughs> there is something about the power of two. If two of you on the earth can touch and agree, asking anything in my name, then it shall be done. I want to make sure that you are married to the right person. I want to make sure that you have the right prayer partner. I want to make sure that you have the right friends. That when you're going through adversity, even when you hear a negative report, there is someone in your life that will say, yeah, but I agree with God. Yeah, that's what the doctor said. But if God be for us, who can be against us? You need a praying wife. You need a praying husband. You need a praying best friend. And I prophesy to you that in the year of legacy, you will establish a legacy of prayer and prayer agreement that will break the back of the enemy. Can I get an amen? Joshua said, yeah, like Caleb, shut up. He said, the land, he said to the entire Israelite assembly, the land we passed through and explored is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and he will give it to us. You got to underline it if you have a Bible. He will give it to us. Which means that there is something that God has prepared for you and he is waiting to give it to you. You don't deserve it. You did not earn it. But it's a part of your inheritance. If there's anyone here that has ever received an inheritance from your parents or your grandparents or your great grandparents. You didn't work for it. You didn't earn it. But they decided to give it to you whether you earned it or not and I'm speaking to a generation of legacy carriers that even if you did not receive anything you will make sure that you leave something to your children's children's children let me say it over here you're gonna have more than enough you're gonna have so much that it doesn't matter if your parents or your grandparents if they didn't leave you anything that's all right you are gonna make sure that you leave something for your children's children's children you will be a legacy carrier you will build an inheritance you will leave land and title and blessings and an overflow and the abundance of Abraham Isaac and Jacob Solomon asked for wisdom and the Lord gave him wealth Abraham asked for a son and the Lord made him the father of many nations there is an acceleration there is a reciprocity of your prayers and your faith that you're going to leave for the generations to follow so Joshua says look the Lord if the Lord is pleased with us he will give it to us only do not rebel against the Lord do not be afraid of the land because we will swallow them up their protection is God is gone but the Lord is with us do not be afraid of them. In Proverbs chapter 28, we see this incredible passage of scripture that says, where there is no vision, people perish and cast off restraint. One of the greatest enemies of vision is the ability to see, sight. Because we are, as a people, we have this tendency to kind of lean toward the negative report. We have a tendency to listen to all of the problems. And many of us in this room, we have a, a doctorate in being able to talk about problems. But we need to graduate to the season or the place where you pray about the solution. And you don't allow all of the problems of the world to shackle you so that you start to say something that you do not want. So today we are speaking about the legacy of vision. Because as a man thinketh, so is he. Therefore, I want you to fight for what you think. Because what you hear determines what you say. And what you say determines what you pray. And your prayers will affect and infect your vision. So say what you see. So you can see what you say. So you should protect what you hear because there is a, an agenda to try to keep you stuck in fear. 
So what do you hear? What do you see? Not in the natural, but in the, the spirit realm. Because I'm here to remind you that it may look like you're surrounded, but you're surrounded by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and the great I am. I, I need some volunteers. Actually, I'm just going to recruit some people. Uh, Maddie, can you come up to the stage? And, and uh, Sandra and Vivian, can you come? Uh, Pastor Josh and Pastor Sippy, can you come up? S.A., Pastor Roberson. Uh, my lovely wife, uh, Pastor Mona, can you come? Sam, can you come up, uh, please, as well? Uh, come up, uh, Donna. Can, Eric, can you come up is, if, it's, if it's all right in Jesus' name? Hallelujah. Come on up on the stage and just, you know, get in the line. I need 12 uh, incredible uh, volunteers just to line up right there uh, in the, from pole. There you go. Very good. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Come on up, uh, super no no in Jesus' name. Uh, the, the genius. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Come on, I say. All right, come a little, come closer. That's good, right there. That's good. So before you, what you see is you see 12 leaders. They represent the tribe of, of Israel. The people had determined in Deuteronomy chapter 1, send 12 people to go spy out the land. Now should Moses have done that? He talked about that. Uh, sometimes we, we value the, the words of our, met, our, our friends and family more than the word of God and so but here we are the 12 spies have been sent over to spy out the land of Canaan out of these 12 people I just wonder is there anyone here by the name of Joshua oh Pastor Josh very good Pastor Josh can you come stand over here and is there anyone here with the name Caleb Okay, anyone here with the name starting with the letter C? Oh, wonderful. Look how this works out. Pastor Cynthia, um, can you guys just come look right together? Keep moving, keep moving here. Very good, very good. Can you put your hands together for these incredible leaders? Incredible men and women of faith. Let's be honest. Sometimes when we hear of the negative report, we always just think of the negative. But the reality of it is, is that these all, these leaders were, they had well intentions. They loved their families. They loved their tribe. They loved their people. I imagine, Deacon Margaret, that the reason why they were selected is because when Moses held the staff out and the Red Sea parted. Many of these tribes were tasked with helping their people walk through on dry ground. They could be trusted. I imagine that these 12 and these 10, they had passed the test so many other times where they had been faithful, where they had been committed, where the Lord had seen their life and their fruit and that's why they were chosen to go on this incredible assignment but you know that sometimes you can be faithful you can be committed and you can pass the test but then sometimes you can fail a test and so when these 10 they all went to solve the same land but these 10 decided that they were going to go in front of all of the children of Israel. And they were going to say, not just to Moses, this wasn't private, but they were going to say to the entire generation, listen, y'all, we cannot do this. 
if we go to Canaan, there are giants there. The land is too difficult. The topography of the land, there are giants in the land. Man, let's, let's go back to Egypt. Let's raise another, let's try to get another leader. Moses is crazy. I don't know what his problem is. I don't know what his issue is. I don't know if he got dropped when he was a baby. I don't really know what his problem is. But, but whatever you do, family, whatever you do, generation, do not listen to them. We cannot go with them. If we go with them, it's a suicide mission. But I'm so glad that someone that was a part of the team at first, they stepped out of the crowd and they said, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know what, y'all? Shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. And Caleb stood up and said, if God be for us, who can be against us? We can and we will and we can do it together. Aren't you glad that Caleb had faith beyond what he could see? Aren't you glad that Joshua then stood up and agreed with Caleb and said, you know what? I've heard what Caleb said and I agree with Caleb. I'm not going to agree with the negative report. I'm going to believe in what the report of the Lord has said. And if God said that we can do it, then we can do it. If God said that we can take the territory, we can take the territory. If God said that as long as we are not afraid and as long as we do not rebel and as long as we stand in faith that the land is already ours then that is what I believe I know we're clapping now but here's the reality the reality of it is is that many of us not all of us but many of us even right now we still believe the report of the ten. Their information, their exploration, their vision has now affecting your life right now. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, let me, let me prove it to you. About 30% of our church are the people that are the givers, that are those that serve, are those that as a ministry, we have decided, or they have decided, we're going to believe God. We're going to trust God. We're going to follow the word of the Lord. And then there's a percentage of you that are good people, are, feel connected to the church, but you have decided to listen to the voice of the ten. Oh, no, no, we can't tithe. Oh, no, no, we don't. They, this, that church has already enough volunteers. They don't need any volunteers. Oh, no, no, no. No, I can just go to church every now and then and that's fine and that is not in congruency with what God has spoken to Joshua and Caleb and so I, I, I just wonder how many of you out there you can identify with Joshua and Caleb as ones that will say if God be for me who can be against me I'm walking by faith I'm walking by what God says I know there are giants in the land I know there are adversities I know there are difficulties but I'm not going to allow the opinions of others to inf okay wait a minute looks like someone's trying to join the voice that is speaking of faith it looks like there is a church there is a generation there is you see if one person moves and I'm speaking to you you're not just the Moses in your family but you are a legacy carrier that you will rewrite your story you will rewrite the legacy. You were unfaithful, but now you're faithful. You used to walk in unbelief, but now you believe. You used to talk about people and gossip about people, but now you're saying, I'm going to say what God says. I'm going to believe what God says. I'm going to stand with God. I'm glad you guys moved, but can you go back for one second? That was really good, love. Very good. Because, you see, it looks like the minority has the numbers, but in reality, God is with them. 
and it may look like you're surrounded by those that have the negative report but as long as you're surrounded and insulated by God that's all that you need can you give God some praise thank you ten spies what you say determines what you pray what you pray determines affects your vision and what you see will determine what you say so say what you see so you can see what you say and protect what you hear protect what podcast you listen to protect be aware of what news information where you gather information from be aware Lord is this you speaking Lord are you trying to rise faith in me or is this only trying to create fear I got some incredible news to share with you Jubilee when the pandemic hit and there were so many different challenges and and we were one of the churches that as you've seen almost over four hundred thousand dollars we were helping support other churches and nonprofits because we knew that we wanted to help others but I want you to know that what the enemy meant for evil God can turn around for the good because of our vision and because of our ability as a church to pivot I'm here to announce and to just share with you that even through one of the most difficult seasons of our country and our world and our ministry that as a church we have been able to touch over 174 countries to the glory of the Lord what the pandemic meant for evil God has turned around for his good we as a ministry in Jubilee worship over 13 million streams of music all around the world over 487,000 people have streamed our services to God be the glory and over a hundred and sixteen thousand followers on all social media platforms and outlets you see so when others were looking at the negative when others were looking at the difficulties when others were looking at the giants when others were looking at the topography of the land we decided decided as visionaries we decided as a church to say well God you must be doing something greater that we can't see you must have a greater call a greater plan a greater move that you have for us and we as a church said Lord here we are Lord send me Lord you can use me who are you listening to What gave Joshua and Caleb that ability to see beyond what they could see in the natural and believe God for the supernatural? You see, the power of legacy is that we get an opportunity to study our history. We get an opportunity to make a true assessment of where we are. But then we get this great privilege to use wisdom to unveil foresight visionary thinking a good pastor is a visionary that leads other visionaries how many visionaries do I have out there how many visionaries are, are listening to me right now you see you have a vision for your life you have a vision for your family you have a vision for your career you have a vision for your business you have a vision for your ministry I am a visionary that the Lord has given this responsibility to lead other Visionaries. I'm a leader that leads other leaders. I'm a president that leads other presidents. I'm a parent that leads other parents. And you are not just a follower, but you're a visionary. If there are any visionaries in this room, can you just give God a clap of praise? I'm not just a follower. I'm a visionary. I'm a leader. I'm a pastor. I am an elder.
louder. There is something that is greater on the inside of me, and I can see it. I'm not going to allow anything or anyone to say, oh, no, you're... You're just, no, no, it's not your time. Oh, oh, no, no, it's, it's, no, no, you can't do that or you can't have that. (laughs) You need to tell them, shut up. You're not listening to the 10, but you're going to walk with Joshua and Caleb. And so where are we going as a church, Jubilee? I'm glad you asked that question. Right now as we speak, it's now 1125, right now as we speak, our third campus now many of you have been here long enough that i would make this i would speak this over the life of our church for years we are one church in two locations with more locations to come how many of you were here when i was saying that over and over and over again well look what god has done right now jubilee worcester is having service right now as we speak there is an army of intercessors and prayer warriors pastor will and pastor debbie are in their place leading and right now we're in a season where every fourth sunday they have a live in-person service but in just a few months they will be having service every Every single week because we are a church without walls and we will plant a church in Lowell and we will plant a church in New Bedford and we will plant a church in Providence and we will plant a church in Dorchester and we will plant a church in Somerville and we will plant a church God is going to use us to plant churches all around New England and even upside down the East Coast corridor to God be the glory this is not the end this is just the beginning because the Lord asked our founder a question years ago what's the proof that the church is alive and our bishop said the proof that the church is alive is that the church grows and the Lord said no that's the proof that the people are alive and people reproduce after themselves and the church will grow but the proof that the church is alive is that it reproduces itself in other churches number two one of our future visions and it's a now vision is that through the and some of y'all are going to get excited about this uh, because I, I hear some children in the room uh, but we get an opportunity to relaunch our children's ministry in the history of our church We have been known as a church that has been concerned about the next generation. Not just children, but junior high, high school, young adults. And we get an opportunity now to to rewrite the story. My vision is that there would be children all around in all of our campuses that would wake their parents up and say, we got to go to church. That their children will be excited to go to church, not Oh, I got to go to church. It's so boring. Oh, I don't want to go there. But there were kids who'd be like, oh, we're going to Jubilee. Oh, we're going to church. Oh, my God, I'm so excited. I can't wait to learn about God. I can't wait to worship. I can't wait to be a part of the generation that can lift hands and worship and have fun to the glory of God. We get an opportunity now to, to rewrite, to reshape, to to relaunch our children's ministry. What an incredible opportunity the Lord has given to us. Over 28 years ago, the Lord spoke a vision to an incredible woman of God and caused her to establish a ministry called Rise, reaching into self-esteem. And about 13 or 14 years ago, we bought this person, we bought this church in Stoughton, our second campus, and there was a house that was seated in a position in the back of the property, and for many years, we didn't know what we were going to do with the house, because the house had not been occupied. It was mold throughout the house. The house was just in bad repair, and for many years, we thought we would just tear it down, maybe put some paving over it or put another facility over there, but one day, this woman of God who the Lord had used to establish a ministry for young women and and women of all generations, was looking out of the window of her office and saw this house. And the Lord said to her, 
that's the Rise House. And now in just a few short weeks, we will have an occupancy permit and the Rise House will be fully op operational, blessing women of all generations. Because, and, and Pastor Mona gave me this, she says, she said, hon, you have to say this, when you empower one woman, you shape an entire community. And what an incredible opportunity we have to empower women. A part of the Rise House is this amazing garden where we'll be able to help families learn how to garden. And we'll be able to uh, help with the, the food shortage and the food deserts that are in our communities. So we have a vision to impact not just physical, not just mental and social, but also even how we eat, how we look at food, how we look at our communities for the glory of God. Someone say, I'm a leader. So we are concerned about leadership development. We're concerned about raising the next pastors and the next CEOs, the next mayor, the next city councilman, the next school superintendent. We are concerned about not just the leadership of this church, but establishing leaders that will go outside of these four walls and impact our community for the glory of God. Because I'm a leader that is leading other leaders. It's not an accident, Jubilee, that we are walking into our 40th year. And I believe that this year, 2022, will be the year for home ownership. You know, sometimes wherever I'm looking, they clap more. But let me say it over here. It's the year of legacy, and it's the year of home ownership. If you are connected to this church, my prayer is that you will get involved in our first-time homebuyers classes. You will get involved in learning and growing so that you can purchase your own home. For those of you that already have a home, I'm prophesying that you will have another home, that you will have more land, that you'll have a greater blessing, that, there, that your vision will open, that your perspective will open, that this is the year that you take the limits off of God. It took you so much work to get that one house and now you've been resting in that one season but God is saying there's another level huh? there's another season huh? there's another glory if he'll take you from glory to glory this is the year that you will accept that glory huh? and you walk in that glory huh? and you will be the person in your family that'll change the entire story one house is not enough <laughs> one stream of income is not enough I'm praying right now that your vision would open that your streams will create more streams that you will be a business owner that you will be a lender and not a borrower that your business will multiply actually I believe that this year in the year of home ownership that your entire financial blessing your entire financial portfolio will double love our financial portfolio will double in the name of the Lord actually it's the year of double 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 it's the year of it will triple in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ you'll have a house your son will have a house your grandchildren you will leave a legacy for your children 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 you won't waste money on things that do not matter. I want you to do something, Jubilee, not to, not to hurt you, but to help you. I want you just to look over the next last six months and ask yourself the question, how much money have I spent on eating out? How much money have I spent on clothes? How much money have I spent on renting furniture? Pull that number together and stop it. Reassess what you're doing. It's not what you make. It's what you do with what you make. 
but in the year of legacy you will be a homeowner and Jubilee is going to help you it's so heavy on me I'm telling you Lord if you bless me with multiple millions I you will you, you can use me as a conduit to bless the dreams and the visions that I have I, 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 in this coming day we're gonna be able to buy people's homes we're gonna pay off mortgages we are going to do we are going to be extravagant givers for the glory of the Lord because we are a church without walls we are concerned about our children's ministry. We are planting not just one rise house, but we are concerned about other neighborhoods and other areas that need the services that will be provided by this incredible organization. We will be a house of leaders. Leaders will come, they will grow, they will serve, they'll be planted, and then they'll also go and they'll be sent to other parts of the nation. We are a church that is concerned about home ownership because, hear me, Jubilee, because we are a house of prayer. And my vision is that in this year, you will see your home not just as a place where you live. It's important. It's also a place where God lives. God lives. Right now we have three locations, four, including our online campus. My prayer is that our, our church would we'll have thousands of campuses all around the world. That you would pray about, you know, during campaign season, you, you get the campaign or the candidate that you are supporting and you put their sign out of your house and people drive by and know that you're supporting you know mayor Wu, you're supporting you know annabelle this or you're supporting joe biden or the other candidate hallelujah oh, praise the lord but in this year you will receive or you will accept this gift from us a sign that says this is a house of prayer and you will proudly put it on the outside of your house and people will know they'll say what does that mean oh we just we pray people will start to think man I was walking by that house and there's something about that house and actually someone will actually ring on your doorbell and say ding dong and they open up and they'll, and they'll ask you what must I do to be saved imagine with me Jubilee on the summer months of, of, our, of our church there are hundreds maybe thousands of neighborhoods and you will determine that you are going to host a block party but the block party would be a house of prayer party where there's Christian music and there's food and there are games and then at some point someone will get on the microphone and just pray because when you pray over someone when you pray over your neighborhood when you pray over your city you're planting seeds and those seeds will come and mature to reap a harvest not just in your life, but in the legacy of your family. And it keeps going and going and going. Stand with me, Jubilee. Can you lay your hands on your eyes? Just lay your hands on your eyes. And Lord, today, as we lay our hands on our eyes, we pray that you would remove the, the cataracts, that you remove the blinders, you remove the scales. Father, help us to see beyond what we can see. Help us to identify with Joshua and Caleb and reject the negative words of others that may even be well intended but they just don't have all the information Father help us to recognize that they're more for us than against us and Father you are giving us this incredible opportunity in the year of legacy to rewrite our story to even redefine our legacy 
We thank you that our children will remember this year and for years to come they will praise the Lord for some of the decisions that we made in this year. It's not a coincidence that the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. It's not a coincidence that Jesus fasted for 40 days. It's not a coincidence that here we are standing upon the precipice of our 40th year and God has something that he wants to do in us and through us. Open our eyes to see. May we walk in the prophetic understanding of Habakkuk 2, that we should write the vision down, make it plain so the readers can run, so that a herald, so that our children, so that generations that are ahead of us and behind us will be able to decipher the plan that has come from you. Strengthen us, unite us, and equip us in Jesus' name.